Hey everyone, this is Mark Studica. Today I'm going to be talking about the DaVinci XYZ 1.0 3D printer. Uh, we just started selling these recently over at Studica, so they sent me over one and I've just been messing around with it so I can learn it. Uh, so I'm going to show you a little bit about the basic workflow to bring an STL file into XYZWare and then prepare the file for printing and then printing it and I'll show you the whole process. Uh, it's pretty basic and straightforward, won't take too long. But I just want to kind of give everybody an idea of what the DaVinci can do. So the DaVinci printer is this guy. This is here on our website. And you can see that's a picture of it. It's actually pretty large. Um, it does fit on a pretty small table. You'll see it in my video once I bring that up. Um, and it takes ABS plastic uh, filament. So it does come with some filament, so I didn't have to buy any separately. I just popped the thing in there and got it ready. Now, this program that I have up here is called XYZWare. This is the software that comes with the DaVinci. Basically what this is is a viewer for your STL file before you print it. You can double check it, view the info of the file, and then prepare it for printing. So what I'm going to do is hit import, and somebody had sent me this STL file. This is a propeller blade for an RC plane and uh, they wanted it printed out so I said hey I need to learn this stuff anyway you know shoot me the file I'll mess around with it and uh, print it so if we look at this once I bring in the STL file we have a couple more options pop up here for movement rotation scaling and my favorite one's the info panel where you can actually get the XYZ dimensions and the volume of the model so you can confirm that everything's going to turn out the way you want it once you print it and so I don't know if there's any issues with this model. The person who sent it to me, I think, uh, designed this in SketchUp. Well, I actually don't know if they designed it. They might have downloaded it from somewhere, but they exported the file out from SketchUp as an STL file. Um, so it could have problems. I have no idea. The way I find out is by hitting the print button. And for this specific item, since it's a propeller blade, it's gonna have to be pretty solid. I want to make sure that I'm using a really high in quality. I'm gonna choose a, a solid 3D density. Uh, I'm gonna choose a thick shell layer. I'm gonna choose a standard speed. I'm gonna sell it to print. And the software is going to start slicing. And uh, there, if we look at the slice, that's nothing what we want. We're missing all of the different fan blades. It got rid of them entirely. Everything's sort of just this isn't right. So to save myself time, I don't want to go in and try and figure out what's wrong with the model and fix it. Uh, there's plenty of guides online if you're interested about um, how to prepare a model for 3D printing. There's a lot of information if you just go to Google and type in how to prepare a model for 3D printing. You're going to find a lot of information. Um, some of the big things are that you don't want to have non-manifold geometry. Uh, you usually want things to be hollow unless they absolutely have to be uh, solid. Saves you on print material and things like that. But Microsoft has a service called NetFab Cloud. And basically what this is, is you log in with your Microsoft account. It's a free service. You just upload your file, it will start to repair it, and you download the fixed version, and it works pretty well. So I'll show you that real quick. If you want the URL, it's right here, netfab.azurewebsites.net. So what I'm gonna do is, um, hit the upload button. I'm going to grab the file. It's going to start uploading. It does uh, warn you that it takes 100 megabytes max. So if you have a gigantic file, this may not work. But once it's uploaded, it starts repairing. My file won't take long because it's pretty small. And once that's done, you hit download. It shows me in Chrome I downloaded my file. I'm going to go back into my XYZWare. I'm going to say, OK, import the fixed STL. And it looks pretty much the same, but let's find what happens when I tell it to print. So I still have, uh, I'm going to do high 3D density, normal shells. Sorry, I'm going to do solid 3D. Yeah, I'm just going to stick to the excellent pre built quality here. And I'm going to tell it to print, and it's going to do its slicing again. And let me check this out. There we go. That's much better. So you can actually see the fan blades now, and it kept the solid material in, the, in between the fan blades. So uh, it's looking pretty good. So at this point, what I would do is just go back to print. It's going to say estimated time is 30 minutes. Do you want to continue printing? And I'm just going to hit OK, and it's going to send that to my printer, and I'll show you the printing process now. 
everyone, so this is the DaVinci printer. Uh, I've already configured the extruder, which is this guy right here. And then you have the uh, platform down here, which heats up, and that is where the printer actually prints the material on. Um, now, before I go ahead and print that model I was just showing you, uh, I need to put down, well, the manual at least recommends putting down some glue in the area where your model will be printing. Now, the model's about two inches in diameter, so I'm just gonna slap on some glue there into the middle using this glue stick that came with the DaVinci, and um, that actually should be ready to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and close the front door because it actually stops a lot of the sound from getting out, surprisingly, and this thing gets pretty loud. So if I go back onto my computer, and I look at this, and it just basically asks me, you can't see it on my camera, it's asking me if I wanna print. I'm gonna hit okay. It's gonna start transmitting. Now if I come over to my printer, I look at the display, it's telling me it's building. So what's happening right now is the uh, extruder board, well, sorry, that's not the right term, whatever you want to call it, the platform is rising upwards. So it will reach a point near the top where the extruder can basically move across it and start printing out. Now, while this is going on, the extruder is being heated to somewhere in the ballpark of 260 degrees Celsius, which is ridiculous. And the um, platform gets heated somewhere around 160, I think. So it takes a little while to actually heat up, and then it also takes a little while for it to print. I expect this model to take roughly 20 minutes or so. Um, the display up here will tell us while it's building how long it takes. So we're watching this guy rotate up. You can see the mechanism there spinning, bringing the platform up. So the thing with the caution sign on it is actually our extruder. So you see it kind of has to fine tune itself. Now if I look at my display, it's telling me what my heating is at for the extruder and the platform. And so it's going to be doing this for a little while and then the extruder is going to calibrate itself to the edges so it knows where it's printing. And we'll catch back up when it starts going. Everyone, so we're back and uh, I apologize the sound did not record on this video footage so I'm overdubbing it but you can see here that we have our extruder calibrating itself with the corners of the platform so basically it knows where it's at and it knows where to print again the extruder is the guy moving around with the giant caution sign on it so I'm getting in real close here you can kinda see that pin next to the nozzle touches the board right there it goes back up and uh, it moves to three different corners and does this and then you'll see it start to print. Now this guy is uh, pretty loud. It makes some real interesting sounds. Unfortunately, I don't have it caught right now. You'll see it in some later footage. But I just wanna give you guys an idea of what's going on once I actually send the printer, or sorry, send the model to the queue for the printer. So now it's gonna go back to its position and you're gonna actually see it now move to the middle and start to print. So at first it starts to, every model I've done so far, it has printed out like a, a ring around the uh, center area like this. I guess that's for some sort of calibration purposes. I don't really know why that happens, but now what it's doing is actually printing out the groundwork for the model. I'm trying to zoom in on that and get some clear footage of it. It's kind of difficult because the model goes way to the top of the uh, printer and you know it, it kind of cuts off near the top end so it's hard to kind of get footage. 
but you see it laying down the foundation right now. Now this is with a high quality, so it's taking some extra time, but if you look at the actual menu, it shows you how long you've got left. Uh, the printer doesn't quite know yet. It's saying 99 hours and 99 minutes just because it doesn't have an estimate yet. But after about two or three minutes, you'll see that change. Uh, this model, according to the XYZ order, is going to take roughly 30 minutes. In my experience, it's anywhere between 15 and 30 minutes to actually print it. And that's not including the cooldown time afterwards. So you just have some more footage here of the print going on. So it's making a pretty fine tuned strides here and that's probably because I chose the excellent build quality which I felt was necessary for this item because it is a plane propeller I didn't want there to be any like holes in the in the material or anything like that if this thing has to fly then it's got to be solid you know so it's laying down that foundation real nice and this will go on again like I said for probably 15 to 30 minutes so we'll pick back up in a moment Okay, so if we take a look now. So you see it's coming more to shape. It's kind of hard to see right now. If we look at the display, it says we've got about eight minutes left. It's almost 50% done. Of course, that's estimate. So far, it's been more accurate than Windows time, though. So that's where we're at right now. So now the model is done. The board was just cooling down for a while and then uh, it's now coming down to the resting position. And once that's done, I will end up, whoops, I just dropped it. I will end up using this. So once it's done here, I'll end up um, using this scraper tool that DaVinci sent with the printer. You use this basically to scrape off the part from the uh, base here. Now it might still be kind of hot. I don't like to be too rough. Kind of just go around all the edges and sort of chip at it. I feel like I must have put too much glue on it. Okay, so after much turmoil, uh, I successfully got the object out. I'll get a better picture of that in a second. Once the thing is done printing, you'll notice there's quite a bit of gunk on there still. So you just take like a wet washcloth. You basically just want to get on there and kind of get this wet and get the glue and the rest of the stuff off of there. I think the reason I had so much trouble getting the, um, the item off was because I didn't do this beforehand. And the Da Vinci comes with this kind of um, brush here that you basically can go on the surface and scratch off any extra plastic. A little bit there. There we go. So that's just kind of how you maintain it. So now I'm pretty much done with the printer. Okay, return. I'm gonna go ahead and just turn that off. This is the model that turned out. It does look quite a bit like uh, like what I'd wanted, so I'm pretty pleased about that. It turned out better than the last time I tried this. I've experimented with this a few more times, a few different times rather. 
so that's the back side of it. See, it's pretty solid. Not so bad. So I like it, it turned out well. And uh, that's the gist of it. That's the uh, DaVinci XYZ 1.0 3D printer. We have these at Studica, you can come check them out. Just one last look at it. And uh, thank you for watching.